What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Tacho here, and we're back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. So today, we got our copy of Resplendent Robin. So for those of you Fae Pass owners out there, we're going to be talking about him today and just going over how he was when he first came out and what this Resplendent alt is actually going to do for him now and for his builds going forward. Okay, so Robin, I think this guy is a pretty interesting choice to give the Resplendent alt to, mainly because he's a really popular character and a lot of people are probably just going to want him regardless of whether or not he's good. And I think that has potential to sell some Fey Passes for them and possibly make the game a little bit more revenue. Also help keep it afloat, because, <laughs> you know, if we're not spending money on the game, then the game's probably going to die at some point. So, I, I mean, like, anything they can do to make a little bit of money, maybe entice some free-to-play players to actually spend, then I don't think that's a bad thing. Okay, Robin, this guy is a day one unit, and his base kit was Blar Raven Plus, Bonfire, Defiance Speed 3, and Spur Defense 3. Now, you want to talk about skills that could really use a level 4 upgrade, we gotta talk about those Defiance skills. They're just so bad, like, <laughs> they were bad day one. They, they haven't even been power crept, they just never were relevant regardless of what time period we're talking about. So, these Defiance skills, once you fall below a certain HP threshold, I believe it's 50%, your unit is going to gain a hard buff of plus 7 to whatever stat it's saying. So for Defiant Speed, you would be gaining plus 7 to speed, which is really dumb. I don't see why they didn't make it a drive type of effect, where it's an in-combat buff as opposed to an active blue buff. Because that means it's just going to override whatever blue buffs you've already gotten, like possibly from speed tactic or attack tactic or whatever. So there's really no point at all in running these Defiant skills. They're just really bad. But the cool thing about Robin is that day one... This guy was actually a pretty clutch unit to summon because Takumi was like one of the top tier meta threats way back when just because he had close counter and he was a bow unit. So having color advantage against colorless type foes, this Robin was super clutch against Takumi. And he also has Spur Defense 3 which believe it or not was actually pretty solid day one as well because you could just use it to passively grant plus 4 defense to an adjacent ally. This was way before we had stuff that could really, like, just overextend and get second actions and things of that nature. There were dancers, of course, but, like, most of the arena maps, which arena was the main meta at that time, there weren't really too many situations where you would get punished for having adjacent allies. Nothing like in Aether Raids today, where having allies adjacent to each other is just a big no-no. So... Back then, this guy was pretty solid, just because of the fact that he was an anti-meta pick to counter Takumi and then grant some spur defense buffs. But, I mean, things have changed for him quite a bit now. Overall, his stat line was pretty mid, and unfortunately, the Resplendent BST bonus didn't really fix that. His stat line is still pretty mid. But if you want my opinion on IVs for this guy, I would say go plus attack mainly because he's already getting colorless triangle advantage. So you're going to want this guy to have as much power as possible, so his attacks are just going to deal as much damage to the foes. Certain colorless type opponents, like Legendary Alm, for example, are just made out of paper. So in a perfect world where this guy has been fed enough attack, there is a decent chance that he may be able to get the one shot on Legendary Alm and avoid getting hit twice and then having to eat a Lunar Flash or something like that. So I think just for the stopping power, plus attack is probably the way to go. But of course, I mean, plus speed, plus defense, plus res, you could really build this guy however you want. Because his stat line is so, like, mid, that doesn't necessarily mean it's terrible, but you could really just put the stat allocation into anything you want, really. And he's just gonna be fine for the most part. As long as you know what you're getting into and you know what you're building him for. But my personal opinion for IVs would be plus attack. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a budget build for this guy. So we are going to be running Tactical Bolt and we're going to be running the Special Effect Refine. So Tactical Bolt, it basically is the exact same thing as Blar Raven Plus where it gives him colorless triangle advantage. But on top of that, it also gives him a Spectrum Tactic style buff 
where he's granting all stats up four to units within two spaces that fulfill the tactic skill requirement. So pretty solid buff skill actually, and it kind of reminds me a little bit of Astrum's weapon. So not too shabby if you want to just get plus four to all stats on your unit. All right, we're going for reposition as the assist, should make a lot of sense. Bonfire as the special, you could go for a healing type special if you wanted, but I think the main takeaway from this guy is that you need him to hit hard whenever he has to go into combat himself. And with Bonfire, he should have enough stopping power to get some KOs there. We're also going Triangle Adept 3, his <laughs> super old school tactics here with the Raven Tome T Adept combo. Way back when, a lot of colorless bows were actually running Cancel Affinity to get over this combo. But that's really not meta anymore, so you don't have to worry about that. So I do think Triangle Adept will be the way to go for this guy in terms of both offense and bulk. But you could go for Fury 3 in the A slot as well if you wanted. It's another budget skill option and the combined stat bonuses it grants could outweigh what you're getting from T-Adept in some matchups. So not too bad there. For the B slot we are going to go for Guard 3, mainly so he can just inflict Guard and stop some pesky colorless bows from actually using their special attack, such as Nyorin Zeal in the case of Legendary Leaf, or Lunar Flash in the case of Legendary Alm. But if you're not the biggest fan of Guard 3, you could go for something else, like maybe Quick Repost, so he could get a double attack. I would stay away from Quick Repost though, because Legendary Alm, which would be one of the prime bait targets for this guy, does often carry Null Follow-Up. So he's going to negate Quick Repost, and you're not going to be able to double attack him. But in other matchups, Quick Repost would definitely come in a lot of handy, so that is something to consider. And I think Dull Ranged could also be a solid B-slot option for this guy if you wanted to just hard bait those ranged opponents even better. Negate any of their active buffs, and then you could sort of level the playing field a bit where they're not having just super titanic stats against this Robin. For the C-slot, we're going with Distant Guard, so he can provide a little bit more support to allies along with that tactical bolt effect. So if you're trying to bait ranged with other units, then they're just going to gain plus 4 defense and res, so not too bad. And we're going to go for Sturdy Stance as the Sacred Seal. You do have quite a bit of options here, but Sturdy Stance is going to raise his attack and defense and going to help him out a lot against those colorless bows. And that's where I think this guy is really going to shine in terms of a support build, where he can just spot check a colorless bow, while also providing stat bonuses for your other allies. But feel free to run something else like maybe Distant Defense 3, or even Fierce Stance 3, if you just want to focus more on that stopping power with him, and really make sure you have a chance to get that one shot on certain colorless bows that I talked about. Quick Repost could also fill the Sacred Seal slot too, if you just want to go for that double attack while still maintaining the guard effect. Alright, so let's move on to some more juicier builds for this guy. So this one is going to be a Null Sea Disrupt build, where he's going to be able to bait those Dazzling Staff and Fire Sweep Bow type opponents. Not too bad of course, because his weapon is giving him Colorless Triangle advantage. We're going for the Res Refine as opposed to the Special Effect Refine this time. And that's mainly because the special effect refine, while it's good for supporting allies, it doesn't really do anything for Robin himself. So if you want him to be the main guy doing all of the baiting and stuff like that, you're probably going to want to go for one of the stat refines as opposed to the special refine. So we're going for plus res this time, so he has a better chance of baiting those staff type units. Once again, we got reposition on this build. Soul as the special, just so he can get some quick healing when he needs it. We're going Distant Defense 4 as the A-slot passive, so pretty solid A-slot skill. It comes with a combined dull ranged and also plus 8 to defense and res. So gonna be really nice for shutting down ranged type opponents, and gonna be pretty solid against any cav lines you may see in Aether Raids. You could also go for Bracing Stance 3 if you want, just to get the plus 6 to Defense and Res, and also inflict Guard on the opponents. So just two different options you could run. Of course we want Null Sea Disrupt on this build so he can counterattack the foes that would normally stop him from being able to counterattack. We have Attack Smoke as the C-slot passive. You could go in another direction too, if you wanted Panic Smoke that would probably be okay as well. I think Attack Smoke is probably going to be 
his best bet overall if we're strictly talking about cav lines. But Panic Smoke, if the foes are relying on hard buffs, could really shut them down pretty bad. And we're going for a quick repost as the Sacred Seal so this guy can double attack the foes. But again, his Sacred Seal slot is pretty flexible, so if you wanted to run something else, like maybe Distant Defense 3 just to shut down range even harder, or maybe even Mirror Stance 2 just to get a little extra res and power, it's going to be pretty much your call on which seal you want to run. And for our final build today, we're going to be taking a look at a more close counter-oriented build. So we're keeping the res refine on Tactical Bolt. It's not really going to help him with close foil against the close type of opponents that could attack him. Because close foil, of course, does not allow him to counterattack dragon type foes, which is where his res would really come in handy. But the plus res is still going to help him out against magic type opponents, which he can still totally bait for you. So I don't think the plus res is going to be the worst idea for the refine here. But if you would rather just focus more on melee, then by all means go for plus defense instead. Alright, we got Reposition and Noontime on this build. Noontime is going to combo quite nicely with Time's Pulse. So, you're always going to have Noontime at a one-hit cooldown or better. So, pretty good for some clutch healing there. It's not really going to add too much damage for him though, but still. It's going to add a lot of sustain and keep him in the game a lot longer. We've got Lull attacking Rez on this build, so he can neutralize any attack and Rez bonuses the foes may have, and then give them minus three to those stats. So this Robin is going to pack more of a punch and also have more defense as well. Pretty solid overall. And once again, we are going for quick repost as the seal so this guy can double attack the foes. Pretty handy if this guy has to bait a sword type unit. As long as they don't have null follow up, he's going to be able to double attack them. But once again, I mean, feel free to run something else as the seal if you'd prefer. Like, close defense could be pretty cool on this build, just to gain some more defense against close type opponents. Or sturdy stance and mirror stance, like usual, could work out pretty well too. It's pretty much just up to you, as for which skills you think are going to make for the best combo. Now of course, these two high investment builds that we just took a look at are going to be at your own discretion. Because personally, I still think Robin is pretty mid, and if you want to have a tome unit with colorless type advantage, you're probably better off using a different unit, like Sophia for example, who we also got from the Fey Pass. So just keep that in mind, even though this Robin isn't too shabby, he's still pretty mid overall, even with the Resplendent bonus. So if you plan to build him and give him some high investment skills, you're pretty much going to be doing so because you like him as a character and he's one of your favorites, as opposed to him being like some super awesome unit. But that's going to wrap us up for the builds for Robin. And it looks like our next resplendent hero is going to be the Blue Tome Olwyn. Which is pretty interesting of course, because last time when they wanted to buff Olwyn, they gave the buff to the Green Tome Olwyn instead, who really didn't need it. I mean, she already came with the Blade Tome effect on her weapon. So way back when they did that, I would have preferred if they gave the refine to the Blue Olwyn instead. <laughs> but of course they're just petrified of giving any further buffs to the Reinhardt and having him come back into dominance. So who knows when we're going to get a refine for Dire Thunder, but completely ignoring Reinhardt, I feel like the blue Olwen could really use something besides just the plus two to all stats. And I have no idea when that's going to happen, but we'll just have to wait and see. As for her artwork, I mean, <laughs> this, this Olwen is just a booty queen if you take a look at her artwork there, which is completely fine by me. I mean, <laughs> I like them nice and thick as you guys know so this Olwyn being a big booty judy i think <laughs> that's pretty awesome there let me know what your thoughts are on Olwyn in the comment section down below and if you like her art or if you like her as an option for a resplendent hero and that's gonna wrap us up for today's video guys so hope you enjoyed the builds for robin and the discussion and as always this is your boy tacho signing out so take care everybody and I will catch you guys again on the flip side.